The human heart consists of two different pumps. We have a right pump and we have a left pump. And each of these pumps consists of two different chambers. We have an atrium and we have a ventricle. So the right pump found on the right side of the heart contains the right atrium and the right ventricle while the left pump contains the left ventricle and the left atrium that is found on the left side of our heart. Now, these two individual pumps are placed in series with respect to one another. And what that means is they work together in a simultaneous way to create a movement of blood that is unidirectional and continuous. And this is exactly what we're going to focus on in this lecture. We're going to discuss the way that our blood actually moves within the four chambers of the heart. So let's begin with stage number one. Now in stage number one, stage number two, and stage number three, we're taking a cross section of the heart so that we expose the four different chambers and we're examining the heart from a front side perspective. So we have the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. Now, the right side of the heart contains the right pump that has the right atrium, this chamber here, and the right ventricle, this chamber here. While the left side of the pump contains this left pump that contains our left atrium and our left ventricle. Now, we also have the four different types of valves. We have this right atrioventricular valve, also known as the tricuspid valve, and we have the left atrioventricular valve, also known as the mitral or the bicuspid valve. And we have these two semilunar valves. We have the pulmonary semilunar valve, and we have the aortic semilunar valve. So let's begin with stage number one. In stage number one, the atria of the heart, and that includes the right atrium and the left atrium, are fully relaxed. And at this moment in time, they both receive blood from the rest of our body. So let's begin with the right pump that contains the right atrium. So our blood that is deoxygenated returns from the upper portion of the body via the superior vena cava. And the deoxygenated blood comes from the lower portion of the body via the inferior vena cava. And these two uh, blood systems basically connect and they empty out into the right atrium of our heart, which is this chamber here. So the right atrium begins to fill with deoxygenated blood and in this moment in time it is fully relaxed. Now at the same exact moment in time the oxygenated blood that is coming back from the left lung found in this section and the right lung found in this section that blood is coming back via the right and the left pulmonary vein. So we have the right pulmonary vein which is shown in the back of this diagram and this is the left pulmonary, uh, pulmonary vein and they both empty out our oxygenated blood and begin to fill the left atrium of the heart. So this takes place at the same exact moment in time. So our two atria are fully relaxed and blood begins to fill these two atria. The only difference is here we have deoxygenated blood and here we have the oxygenated blood. Now let's move on to stage number two. In stage number two, the right atrium is now fully filled with our deoxygenated blood and the left atrium is also filled with our oxygenated blood and this causes the two atria to contract and when they contract, they open up the tricuspid valve and they also open up our bicuspid or mitral valve. So let's begin with the right pump. 
So the right atrium is fully filled with the deoxygenated blood and it contracts and it forces the opening of our tricuspid valve and that moves the deoxygenated blood and begins to fill the right ventricle of the right pump of our heart. So at this moment in time, the, uh, the right atrium is contracting, but the right ventricle which begins to fill is fully relaxed. Now, this also means because our right ventricle is being filled, we don't want the backflow of blood from these blood vessels, which are basically the pulmonary arteries, back into the right ventricle. And that's exactly why the pulmonary semilunar valve, this valve right here, is closed. So that we have a one-way movement, a unidirectional movement of blood this way, from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Now, at the same exact moment in time, this is what begins to take place at the left side of our heart in the left pump. So just as the right atrium is fully filled, the left atrium is also fully filled, but it's filled with oxygenated blood. And this causes the contraction of this left atrium and that opens up the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve, and our oxygenated blood now flows into the fully relaxed left ventricle of our heart. Now, this, uh, this valve, which is known as the aortic valve, is also fully closed as this valve here to prevent the backflow of blood from the aorta back into our left ventricle. So this takes place at the same exact moment in time. So in stage one, the atria are both fully relaxed. In stage number two, both atria contract while both ventricles fully relaxed. And now let's move on to stage number three. So as the blood fills our two ventricles, they basically, uh, they basically fill up with the blood. So let's begin with the right pump. So once the right ventricle is fully, uh, fully filled with our deoxygenated blood, what happens is there is a buildup of pressure and what that means is this ventricle, the right ventricle begins to contract and that causes the closure of this tricuspid valve and it causes the opening of the pulmonary valve and now our deoxygenated blood can flow via the pulmonary arteries and into the left and the right lung. Now at the same exact moment in time, we have our filling of this left ventricle because it is now fully filled with oxygenated blood. It causes contraction of the left ventricle closing this valve known as the mitral or the bicuspid valve. At the same time, it forces the, uh, the opening of the aortic valve and it forces the movement of our oxygenated blood into the aorta of our body and that aorta basically diverges into many smaller arteries and that moves our oxygenated blood into the rest of our body. And these two processes, one taking place in the right pump and the other one taking place in the left pump, take place simultaneously at the same exact moment in time. So here we have the contraction of our right ventricle and the contraction of the left ventricle that takes place at the same exact moment in time. And if we examine these three stages, these three stages basically take place over and over and over, and this creates a unidirectional and a continuous flow of blood, not only inside the four chambers of the heart, but also inside the entire cardiovascular system of our body. So once again, in stage number one, we have the right atrium and our left atrium that are fully relaxed. 
and they are accepting, they are receiving blood inside those atria. The right atrium is receiving deoxygenated blood, while our left atrium is receiving oxygenated blood. They are being filled, they are fully relaxed. Now, in stage number two, now our two atria contract because they are fully filled. That opens up these two atrioventricular valves and allows the movement of our blood from the atria and into our two ventricles. Here we have deoxygenated blood, but here we have oxygenated blood. Now, at this point, these two ventricles are fully relaxed while these two atria are fully contracted or they're contracting. And in stage number three, it's these ventricles that are now fully filled. As a result, they contract and they move our blood into the rest of our body. This moves the blood into our pulmonary arteries and that moves it into our lungs, while this ventricle moves our blood into the order and into the rest of our systemic circulation of our body into the organs and tissues found in the upper and lower portion of our body.